Hello there, thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you a new effect that I came up with recently for some cosplay photos I was working on. Um, and it's kind of cool because within this one technique are a few sub techniques that are good to learn, such as masking, how to make your own brushes, layers, and some other basic effects to achieve something interesting and unique. So. Uh, here are the images that I made for this event and um, really what was going through my mind was I wanted to find out a way to add something into the foreground around my client, around the subject that was interesting. And I wanted it to be geometric. I wanted to have something kind of uh, techy, futuristic -y, you know, basically something shape related, but I didn't want it to just be shapes. I wanted there to be something inside the shapes that was interesting. And the only thing I could come up with doing was having the background photo inside the shapes, but altered in a way that made it kind of made you kind of look at it twice and say, hey, something's different about this or what's going on here. Um, and coincidentally, it, sometimes it looks sort of like shattered glass, which is a cool effect. Um, it kind of looks like there's a little bit of warping or you know, multi-dimensional, something weird going on with uh, with the image. And depending on what the background is and how drastic you use this effect, I'm sure you can really achieve some interesting effects. And you might be able to really make it look like shattered glass if you do it right. And if you guys do come up with something cool, um, send it my way. I would love to see what you make with my technique. Uh, I need to give it a fancy name like the Daniel Grove method. I don't know, that sounds lame. But uh, send it to me on either my Instagram, my Facebook, whatever. Um, and yeah, let me know what you come up with. So let's get started. All right, the first step of this Daniel Grove method is we're going to make our own brush. And basically what we're going to use the brush for is to expose top layers that will be magnified. And that's going to give us the effect of what's called refraction uh, within glass, whereas glass and other materials will magnify what's behind them depending on the density and the material. Um, and uh, so we're going to fake that by using layers of a magnified version of the base image, which is our, our, our initial image. And the triangles are we're going to use as a scattering randomized brush to show what's beneath it in uh, a random and somewhat natural kind of way. So first, uh, we've got our base image here, and I'm going to make a brush. So I'm going to do control N, which is going to be new file, and we're going to size it as a perfect square. I'm going to say 1000 by 1000 pixels. That's pretty good. That's a big triangle. Create. Now with brushes, um, you want the background to be white, which is going to be transparent and will not be there in the brush, and black for your actual form of whatever the brush is. Now that's kind of weird. I thought it would be the other way around because when you mask, white means opaque and black means transparent, but it's not that way with brushes. I don't know why. So let's make a shape. We're going to use Photoshop shape so we can make an exact triangle. And I'm going to go down to shape and polygon. And I'm going to tell it three sides up here. I've already got it in there. Now I want to draw right in the middle. And one trick to do that is I'm going to right click on my rulers. If you don't see your rulers, just do control R and they will pop up. And then I'm going to right click on my ruler and turn it to percent. So now I'm going to click on this left ruler on the left side on the actual ruler and drag over. And I, this is called a guide. It's not going to affect your image. It's not going to show up when you save your image. It's just a, an invisible line to help you line things up. And I'm going to draw a crosshair. And if you hold shift, it'll be exact numbers instead of percentages. So I've got a line at 50% horizontal and 50% vertical. So I have my middle point there without any guessing. Now I'm going to click, oh, I need to make my brush black, remember? So I'm going to hit D, which makes your D, your colors black and white. And I'm going to change my shape option to draw a pixel. I don't want it to draw an actual shape or a path or anything fancy. We're going to, do, we're going to render this straight into pixels. So click as best as you can um, in the middle. Drag outwards. Now put your, I'm going to do mine downwards because I already have a brush made for this, which is facing upwards. So this will, I'll show you what my new one's going to look like. So uh, I'm dragging downwards on that guide. It's automatically snapping to it, which is good. And I'm just going to let go. There we go. So we've got one simple layer, black triangle on a white background. That's all we need. Now, if I press B to go to my brush and right click, um, this, I have my, I have a set of custom brushes that I made. So I'm going to go to that. I'll call it my effects brushes. So, so you've already got my older triangle I made earlier up here. Um, so you want to choose whichever brush set you want to load this into. And now we're going to make it into a brush. So go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. And I'm going to name this Triangle New. There we go. Now if I right click again, voila, there's my new triangle brush. And as you can see, <laughs> the colors are inverted, which is really weird. Um, and we've got it. So. Um, 
when you, and don't close Photoshop before you save that brush set because it'll delete it. So I'm going to go back to my image here. And if you see, if I paint, it's already got my triangle brush selected. This is a triangle brush. Pretty lame. It doesn't do anything for me. So the next step for this is we're going to duplicate the background image. Right click on the background image. Duplicate layer. OK. Now for me, my little resizing or transform tools automatically pop up. You need to have that checked on up here so that they do. If not, just do control T. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit because we're going to be expanding these layers one by one. So I'm going to put my mouse over on the top of here. Now this will expand it all weird. It's not proportional. It's only going up to one corner. I don't like that. So here's two really awesome tricks that I could not live without. If you hold alt while resizing, that keeps it centered. Isn't that cool? You can resize from the center. Now if you also hold shift, it keeps everything proportional. Never resize anything unproportionally, please. It is a huge newbie mistake and things look awful. You can tell if someone's, you know, stretched too tall or too fat. It's just, it's not, not good. So we're going to stretch this first duplicated layer out just a little bit. And technically it's 104.4% larger. I'm going to let go and hit enter. Now I'm going to duplicate that again. Okay. I'm going to size it up again. A little bit more. Another, again, 104.4. That's not on purpose. <laughs> you don't have to follow these numbers exactly. Just kind of go by, go, go by your eye. And a third one, just for good measure. Hold Alt and Shift again. Alt and Shift together. Or Shift and Alt, whatever. There we go. So if I make these invisible one by one, you see it's getting smaller and smaller. And here's my base normal unstretched image. Normal size. Bigger and bigger. All right. Cool. So next step, we're going to uh, make a mask on this first layer. My, I've got my top two layers invisible. Just hit the eyeball. First layer visible. Click on the mask button down here. We've got a, all white. That means it's all visible, all opaque or 100% um, visible. I'm going to make this go away. I'm going to make this black. So click on the mask and control I. Look at that. It's black. I can no longer see it. You cannot see this top layer because it's all uh, it's all black. It's all it's not there because of the mask. All right, so let's get into our brush settings. And here's the next cool thing I'm going to teach you in this video: how to make a custom brush preset with some interesting scattering and randomization. So we've you got to select your brush, which right now is just by it's just doing the default stuff. It's just doing that, nothing fancy. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to click on our brush. Uh, control panel over here and I'm going to enable a few little functions here first is brush dynamics and we're gonna have the size jitter jitter means randomization so I want the size to jitter a lot uh, I want the angle or the rotation of the triangle to alter like a lot I don't want it to be all one directional and um, roundness we can do a little bit that's gonna squeeze it left and right so it's not a proportional triangle and that's okay for right now. I want the triangle to be a little bit different. I don't want it to be the same shape triangle all over the place. Going back to this very first option, let's add some spacing. Because I don't want these triangles to be piling up on the top of each other. I want them to be spread out. So we've got a lot of spacing. We've got size changing, angle changing, and thickness changing. Um, and scattering will actually move it on an X and Y basis. So even if you paint a straight line, your brush is going to jump around to the left and right or, or up and down. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to make it a white brush, and I'm going to Alt-click on the mask. So that I'm looking at my mask right now. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And you can change all this stuff by changing the scatter down a little bit. Change our spacing. See what it's doing? It's, it's amazing. you got a lot of options here for making all kinds of cool random stuff. You could do party glitter. You could do bubbles. You could do, you know, whatever. Uh, debris, dirt, all kinds of neat stuff leaves. I'm going to size my brush down a little bit. There we go. That's pretty awesome. Lots of possibilities with that. All right, so um, I want it to be a little bit bigger. Um, and that's good. And I'm going to paint onto this mask. And now let's click on the actual layer itself so that we're in normal view. But let's left click on the mat on the mask. So now we're editing the mask. Now watch this as I paint little jumpy pieces are popping out. You zoom in over here. Let's get rid of that brush panel. You can you can clearly see the weird magnification and look at her face. She's getting all chopped up. Very weird. 
Now you gotta be careful where you do this effect. You don't want it to be all over the whole image. For me, I like to do it around the person a little bit in front, as long as it doesn't distract from their body. So um, let's look at the mask again. See that's that white part is in front of her face, which is making this top layer visible. So gone, invisible, visible. So let's erase uh, some of those those uh, triangles that cover her face because I don't like that. I want her normal. I want her to be normal looking. So I'm going to do uh, a black brush, which will get rid of the white. Obviously, let me show you what I'm actually going to be doing. So see that I'm basically erasing little by little the white triangles that I don't want. So let's go back to normal view. Again, select the mask. If you don't select the mask, you're going to be drawing on top of her image. You don't want that. We're going to draw on top of the mask. So I've got a black triangle. I'm going to kind of erase a little bit here. Now it's still scattering. It's not going to do exactly where you paint because it's jumping around, which is kind of cool. There we go. I don't think there's any parts of her face that are being distorted yet right now. We can double check by popping in and out of this layer. Yeah, pretty awesome. Okay. Now uh, we got this top layer, which is even larger, and I'm going to do some larger triangles on there. So again, select your, your new top layer, make sure it's visible, make a mask, click on the mask, control I to make it black, B for brush, and X to flip your colors. Look at this, my, my foreground and background will flip when I press the X key on my keyboard. Pretty cool, that saves me a lot of time. So I want white, because white is what we're, we're painting the layer in. And I'm going to get rid of this second layer because I don't want that to distract me. I want to just see this layer that I'm working on right here. All right, so click on the mask, paint some larger, oops, I just did one over her face, larger triangle. Okay, not too many. You don't want to go crazy. You just want it to be subtle. Subtlety is the key here. All right, just a few. Let's look at what I did. Nice. Big chunks. And same thing for this top layer. Make a mask. Control I to invert it, B for brush, just in case you switched modes. Make sure it's white. And I'm going to make it a little bit larger. And I'm going to disable the uh, roundness, which in this case, it's not round. It's just stretching the brush. So look, this is this is roundness. You know, It, it looks at it as a circular brush item, and it's just stretching X and Y. But uh, I don't really want that to happen. So I'm going to disable some of that roundness should be called width or something else. I don't know why I call it rodness. All right, so I'm going to paint a few white triangles over here. Big, big chunks taken out. A little bit further on the outside of the image. Well, that's, that's a little too big there. Uh, one, maybe one on her back. I can't really tell what's happening there. Uh, you, can see, you see what I'm saying? you got to be careful where you draw these because it might just make your image look dumb. <laughs> I'm going to erase this one. I don't like this. It's kind of ruining her gun. So I'm going to go B, X to invert my colors, and I'm going to just basically erase, which is actually another cool little way to add variety. See this? This is not no longer a perfect triangle. You can erase little pieces by using a smaller black triangle to really add some more randomness and variety. And you know, nature is very orderly and designed, um, but there is some randomness to it or what we perceive as randomness. So I like to do that in some of my effects so it's not perfect and clean. When things are too perfect, they look fake. All right, so there's our topmost layer, below that and below that. So it's pretty sliced up. And honestly, looking at it for the first time, someone may not catch that. They may say like, she looks really weird. <laughs> or someone pieced her body together. So this may not be the best example. But hey, you know what? You're getting an idea of what of what to do. Um, this will not work on every image. Please do not do it to every image. Um, but it's a cool effect for some, some things. And I think you, if you really spend some time, you may be able to perfect it and do some really cool stuff. You can do things like blending modes. So this is the topmost layer with the biggest triangles. I've gotten rid of the other two layers. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cycle through these different blending modes. Let's see what this looks like. That's cool. So now I can actually see what's below them, but blending modes will change how those pixels blend with the pixels below them. All kinds of creative possibilities. And you've also got opacity. So if something looks kind of cool, but it looks like too much, remember you can blend it down. Uh, you can turn down, that's kind of neat. You can turn down the opacity to basically dial something down. Um, yeah. 
So those are the blending modes. Another thing you can do is you can blur this top layer. So first I'm gonna disconnect. See this little chain link in between the mask and the image? Let's disconnect that. That means whatever I do to this image is not gonna also happen to the mask. If it's on and I do a Gaussian blur to this layer, this top layer, it's gonna also blur the mask, but I don't want that. I want the mask to be sharp. So I'm gonna do a basic Gaussian blur to this layer. So click on the layer, make sure the link is off. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And let's just click somewhere with some detail. All right, so Gaussian Blur is just that. It's just a basic unidirectional blur or omnidirectional, whatever. Um, so we've got preview on. So if you look real closely, look at that. I turned it way up. You can see that these triangles now, this triangle is sharp because the mask is sharp, but the detail inside of it is getting blurred which kind of gives the effect of dispersion or glass that has some kind of texture to it. Like shower glass, it'll blur stuff that's behind it. So that's another cool little natural touch you can add to give a real glassy effect. Cool. Um, you can also add some uh, styles to it, layer styles, uh, such as bevel and emboss. So that looks awful. <laughs> let's, let's tweak this a little bit. Let's do inner bevel. Yeah, I'm not really feeling the shadow part. It looks pretty bad. So you can give a little bit of depth, depending on how you change these settings, um, to do some interesting stuff. So look at that. It's kind of got a little bit of a thick diamondness to it. You can change the depth, or sorry, the size, make a little bit sharper edges. Um, you know, it's hit or miss. Uh, like I said, something may look really bad initially, but if you tweak it just enough and use some creative thought like I did when I first made this effect, you might be able to pull out something that's really unique and who knows, it could be could be the next big thing, you know, whatever. So let's cancel, I don't like that. <laughs> um, there's also glow and other things you can apply. Uh, so we've got these other bottom layers here. I'm gonna add um, a little bit of a brightness change. Selecting the layer, I'm going to unlink it from the mask again and I'm gonna do Control L now you can change the brightness of just that layer. So you can darken it down a little bit, or maybe you can make them brighter. That's, that's actually kind of cool. I like the brightening effect on some layers, not all of them. And then maybe the bottom layer, you can do it darker. Let's see what that looks like. Not bad. Although it kind of clashes with this because we have a hazy spot of the image because of the lens flare. It doesn't really fit that good. So that looks kind of cool. So the middle layer is bright. And this layer I'm playing with now, you can either make it brighter or a little bit less bright than that top layer. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of variety, a lot of stuff going on. It's almost a little too busy, honestly. If you want to get, uh, you know, critical, um, it's almost too busy. So we could even get rid of some of these layers, simplify it, something like that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So I hope you guys learned a few tricks, how to make your own brush, some uh, interesting details about masking, uh, layers, um, and obviously my silly triangle shatter effect, which is a hit or miss, of course. Um, uh, but you know what? I like what I came up with originally, <laughs> so I thought I'd share it with you guys. So let me know what you come up with and happy editing.